Okay, so hello. Welcome to FGA Après Cours. Uh, my name is Viviane Gauvin. I am an ESL teacher for the CSS Beauce Chemin. I am joined with my two co-hosts, Marc Gariepi, who is an education, education consultant for Le Récit in Adult General Education, and Richard Pinchot. Agent de Développement des Après-Cours FGA. And today our guest is Christian Doyon Poulain, ESL, ESL teacher for the CSS Beauce et Chemin uh, in Au Bâtisseur de Sainte Marie, where he's also lead pedagogique and lead pedagogique for Le CA Beauceville. And today he will be speaking about breakout games. So, uh, yeah, well, hello everyone. Uh, Glad to see you. Um, so yeah, today, uh, Viviane, well, she asked me to, to, to be part of the après cours and to present uh, some things uh, I do in my classroom. Um, so uh, today, yes, I will be talking about uh, escape games, breakout games. Um, I know that on the poster, there, there was a, a typo. I didn't notice at first, but it was written breakout rooms, but it's really breakout games. Okay, so it's the concept of escape games in the classroom. Um, just a, a little bit about uh, myself. Uh, so yes, I'm an English teacher. And uh, in my classroom, I have uh, multi levels. So from secondary one to secondary five. Um, and uh, so yeah, a bunch of different people in my classroom at the same time. So this year I started to uh, integrate more and more games in my teaching. Um, I used to do this also in the past and now I introduced a new type of game which are escape games. And today I'm going to present this and a platform I've been using um, in, for the last year which is Breakout EDU, uh, which is a website, a platform that is from uh, United States. Um, but where you can find uh, all sorts of things. And what I will present to you is mostly, well, focused on this for today. Um, so I'm going to start talking about what are escape games for maybe some people who don't know what they are. Uh, I will present to you the website, the platform that I use, how it works, the content that you can find on this. Um, and after I will present to you some games that I have played with my students in the classroom. And we will even have the chance to test one out, a really short game together, just to give you an idea of what it is and how we can uh, use it. But first thing, I don't know if you, um, most of you know what are escape games or if some of you never heard about this or don't know. Escape game is uh, the, the, the most popular types of games are played inside a room where you're locked. Okay, you're physically locked inside the room and you have to solve puzzles, find clues everywhere around the room to unlock the door and escape from this room. So that's the concept. And uh, that's how people play the most, but also there are some board games of escape games where it's a virtual lock uh, or a lock that we imagine and we have to find clues, puzzles, soft puzzles to escape, solve and succeed in the game in a time limit. Okay, so the notion of time limit is important to give us a sense of challenge to try to uh, well, to escape, actually. So that's basically the, the concept of escape game. Um, and of course, those are games that I love. I've been playing escape games for many years. Uh, I'm uh, totally in love with puzzles, with uh, uh, riddles and things like this. So I try to use them in my classroom for my students, because that's one of the things that I really enjoy. Um, so the breakout game, I will show you just an example of the physical breakout game that I use. Oops, you, 
on camera. So this is a breakout box. And as you can see, it comes from breakout edu. Okay. So this is a box in which there is something to unlock. And for this, you have to open the different locks that are connected to it. On this one, you only have four different types of locks, but I could have put six. As you can see, there are holes for six locks on this thing, which is called a hasp. So I have a four digit lock. I have a letter lock. I have shapes. And I have here a key lock. So that's the physical breakout box that students have to solve puzzles to unlock and open in the time limit that I set. Uh, that's the challenge that they have to. Now, uh, to just to give you an idea of what the puzzles can be, um, I would like to show to share with you an example of a. a a breakout game that is uh, available on the website that I've been talking about. Um, just a minute, I'm going to share my screen with you. I hope it's going to work. And um, I'm going to give you two, three minutes to try to solve the puzzle, to unlock, uh, to, to find the, the the combination for the lock. So this one on the platform, it's a lock of the day. So it's a, a digital lock that you can play on the screen or your computer or your cell phone or tablet. So you always have a little scenario to start with. So here we have tweet tweet, the birds need help with today's bird old puzzle. And then we go with the first lock. Here we have an image. That is the clue. That's this, this picture. And the combination here is a word. So five little word that you have to find from the picture. So I'm just going to zoom it so to give you a chance to see this. And we're looking for a five little word to unlock. Going to give you one or two minutes to think about this. Okay, so let's say time's up. So, what did you find as an answer? Can you shout it out? Wings. Wings, exactly. So, that was the word we were looking for. So, obviously, here, if I typed the answer, then yes, congratulations, I broke out. So, this one is digital, so I can play on a screen on, on the computer, but it could be. If we come back with, if we come back on the idea of the locks where I had a letter lock, well, then the combination would be wings. So I would spell wings here on the lock. I would open this lock and I would be one step further in solving all the, pu all the puzzles. Wow, just they must, the you, students must love it. Yeah, they really enjoy doing this. And as, this, as you saw, this one is in English. It was with words, with um, bird names, and so on. But I'm going to show you a second example. Uh, this one where there is, if I remember, no English necessary for, to solve this problem, this, this puzzle. So here we go again. OK, so here we have. They say there is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It may not be a pot of gold, but here is a bunch of change. So this one, there is a little English just in the scenario. But if we look at the puzzle, well, then we see that it's just an image without any words written on it. And what we're looking for here, I'm going to try to move this one out. We're looking for a combination of colors, okay? So then we have to enter the colors in the right order 
to unlock. So here, then again, the clue is in the image and that's all they have to try to find the answer of the puzzle. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what is the answer here, just to, to move ahead. So what we have to see is that each pot of gold is worth $1. So then in the scenario, they talked about a bunch of change so that we have to see that each circle is a different color or have different colors. And then each one will equal $1. So if we look at the four here, they're the same color, they equal $1. So we have to guess that this one is worth 25 cents. Mm -hmm. So four times 25 cents would be a dollar. If I go with this one, I have the two same coins with the same color. So we have 50 cents. And this big coin would be again 50 cents to equal a dollar. And so then the combination would be from the smallest, look, the one cent or the five cents, I don't remember, five, 10, 25, 50, and so on. So that the combination is this order of color and the students will break out. There we go. So far, so good. Yeah, good, great. Um, so those are uh, locks that are available on the platform. This is just an example. They are called the lock of the day. And so every day there is a new puzzle like this available for students. And um, they, they can be for color, letters, numbers. Sometimes it's, they call it directional. So they have to find arrows that will match the puzzle. Um, I want to show you the platform I use, the website breakoutedu.com. So I'm going to share my screen and present to you what you can find on this website, the resources available. And I forgot to mention it, but if at any moment you have questions, uh, you don't understand, you're not following, please interrupt me or write in the chat and someone will interrupt me and we'll take our time to, <laughs> to explain more in details. Okay, Go ahead, Jennifer. Um, I was just wondering how many of these boxes do you have uh, for your students? How many students uh, normally use one box? Is it, I imagine it's uh, teamwork and um, are they two, three, four students per box or? Yeah, great question. Uh, the best would be from well, one to four students per box, because otherwise uh, it becomes overcrowded and students cannot reach the, the locks or there's too many people in the way. So four is the best number. And so here at our school, we bought four of these boxes, okay? So we mostly play at around 16. Well, sometimes we go to 20 students and we have five people. Uh, at a time playing uh, with the same game. So what I have to do in this case is that I have to set up four boxes with the same locks, the same combination. And then four teams will go with one, each one a box and they will try to open uh, the locks. I forgot to, to show you as also at the same time, in the kit, there is also a, a small box. Okay, so this one that has just one lock attached to it. So then you can imagine that there could be steps where you have to open this small box in which you will find inside a clue for another lock that was on the big box, or you could go and have this small box inside the big one in which they will open the big, the, all the locks, and then they have a final clue to open the small box to make it more challenging. So we can have different style of breakout games in this. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. I uh, just kind of one other little question. How how much time do you allot for an activity like this? Well, most of the time, uh, well, on, on the platform, they, they suggest one hour for each activity, sometimes 45 minutes. Uh, in my experience so far, the games I've played, 
uh, at the level of my students was about 45 minutes to one hour maximum and they, they all succeeded yeah go ahead wendy it might sound weird but uh, you can always change the combinations right for can you make your own games as well like you know the one you said it was like uh the colors and all that stuff, or the ones that you have to do manually. It's easy, like if you want to change your pin number or whatever, or your lock number. Yeah, exactly. So each lock, um, you can reset okay, so to yeah. anything. So like, for example, this one is for letters. Well, when I open the lock, I can um, remove- Rearrange and then- all the, all the rings, rearrange the words, and I could use other rings I'm going to show you later, but uh, instead of words, and I could put numbers or colors or things like this. I, I missed a few minutes because I was finishing with some students, but uh, how much are these boxes? If you if you mention them, the price. Right. Uh, the price of uh, the box. Well, then the, the website comes with a subscription. OK, mm -hmm. so when you you. Um, you sign you 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 sign up for the the, the website you, you can subscribe for a year for this and then you can buy the kits the boxes that we saw okay. um i'm going to i'm going to see uh, when i go back on the website but from memory uh, it's around i think it's 200 dollars per box for a one year subscription plus one mm -hmm. box Okay, and then after each box, I think it's ninety nine dollars per box. Okay, I know, I know, it can sound scary. <laughs> I see your faces, but then again, I have always a question of people say, "Hey, I could buy those kind of locks at Canadian Tire and do my own game and find any kind of box and just put it put it on." And I say, "Yes, probably." Um, but then you would have, I'm not sure if the amount of money you would spend on each individual lot that you could buy at Canadian Tire would be such a save in money versus uh, what you can buy on the platform, okay? But yes, it's, it's part, of the, part of the deal where you have to pay the price to, to have this. But the boxes after you have them for life, uh, so you pay one time for, for one box, but then there is a subscription, a renewal, which is, I think, again, $100 per year, where you can um, you can renew every year that you want. I like the concepts, very good, thank you. Good, other questions, Vivian? Yes, I, I was wondering, once you're on the platform, uh, you have an unlimited no access to number of breakout games and yeah, and once you have the subscription, you 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 you're good to go for a year. You can do as many as you want. There's no limit, and there are uh, I don't know. I think like something, ten thousand games oh, wow. available that you can play. And the ones the daily lock, you can share those on Teams, I guess. Yeah, the daily lock. Copy the link. What I do with my students is that um, I copy the link. I copy paste the link send them on teams or I, I, um, I um, create a QR code from the link and then students can scan it with their phone and they can play it on their phone uh, when they're finished with an activity or so or something like that. So yes, we can share the links from the locks of the day. Yeah. Super, thank you. Gonna go uh, and with an overview of the platform to show you once you're, logged in well you see you have every day you have a new lock of the day on which you can click you can access the game that i just showed you and then each game is uh, divided with school subjects now this website like i mentioned at the beginning it's from the united states so uh, the school subjects are united states oriented um, so if i go with something like um, uh, social studies, well, you will have in this, for example, history, well, it will be U.S. history, okay? Um, hearts will be about, uh, well, heart concepts in general, but you can also have uh, 
United States or American artists. Okay, so it's not Canadian, but if you go with other games like math, well, math is international. So even though it's made in the US or in Canada, it's the same math, okay? Uh, there are kit-based games with the boxes that I showed you and digital games. The digital games, as you can guess, you play them on the computer or on a phone, on a tablet. They're all online, okay? And there are a bunch of uh, games just like the luck of the day that I showed you with the pots of gold. Uh, there are different games like this that you solve. And when you finish all the games, well, you've completed the digital game. Um, what you can do is that you can search for by school subjects by clicking on the tile, or you can do a search from the search bar. And you can also filter your result. If you say you just want kit based games, digital games or any type of game and you can all even though even more you can filter by grade level and then you can add multiple filters let's say i'm going ahead anything here da, 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 da. and then i will click on go and the result that will come up will be from the filters that i selected so you can really uh, do a precise search on this website based on the filters that you did, that you chose, sorry. You can save games also. Let's go with Matt. You can save games in your favorite if you want to go back and use them again. So let's say I go with Algebra, just uh, as an example. I see the name of the game. I see a picture that will present the game and I will see if it's digital or kit required. So if I choose kit required game, well, I need the puzzle. I need the locks and the box from the, the, the website because they are designed with their locks in mind. So I always have the story from the game, the scenario. They explain how to solve each lock, the lock combination. There is a, writ a, write a written tutorial on how to set up the locks. And there is also a video tutorial in which they will explain the game and how to set up, set up uh, every lock uh, before you, you, you put them on the game. After when you click on access game resources, it opens to a Google Drive in which you will find all the PDF files or Google slide files that you can print out and that you will put uh, uh, in front of the box for students to look at. So these pictures are part of the puzzle and they are the clues to solve one of the locks. I just chose one at random, but there are visual, visual clues that they will need. One I, I did with my students last week, this one. So break out the alien code. So what I did is I printed out all of these and students had to look at each sheet and find what is the clue that will open which lock. So let's say, let's take for example this one. I'm going to explain it quickly. What they have to see is that from the crop field, uh, the crop uh, circles, there are some shapes, and on each picture there is a shape that is repeated twice. So like this one is two squares, two stars, two triangles, two stars, two circles. And now how they know how to put them in order where it's from the dates of the picture. So the earliest date, which is uh, this one, will be 
the first the first uh, shape will be a square the second one will be a star and so on until they find the right order to uh, unlock the shape lock sometimes you have to use english sometimes it's just visual so in this one no martians mercurians septenarians earthlings allowed well it refers to the positions of the planets in the solar system so martians come from mars mars is the third planet uh, the fourth planet so they have to write number four on the lock on the lock mercurians mercury is the first planet so they have to write the number one and so on until they have all the numbers from the planets to unlock the four digit lock uh, what's included in your kit when you buy it here is a picture so you have the two different box sizes the big and the small you have this thing which is called the hasp on which like you saw you can attach multiple locks at the same time you have uh, two different multi-lock on which the rings uh, can be removed and change with others so yeah that are letters letters and numbers you have arrows you have colors and you have shapes so you can have a shape multi-lock you can have a color multi-lock or letter and numbers you have two standard locks four digit three digit you have a key lock you have a USB key, so you could decide to put one of the clue on the USB key where they have to open on the computer to find the answer. You have a UV light and a UV pen, so you can write with a UV pen on a piece of paper on one of the printed on one of the printouts, and then you have to use the UV light to find what was hidden with the UV pen. You have, you have hint cards, so students can ask for hints if they're stuck. And there is the red lens viewer. It's a, this type of picture where there is a word hidden inside and we, by using the UV, uh, not the UV, but the red lens viewer, you will see the word stand out from this bunch of nonsense. So you can use it like that. And there are the four C cards where it's um, it's questions, cards, question cards that you can ask students at the end of the game. For example, uh, what did you find difficult in the game in the game? What did you find easy? Did you learn something new? Um, can you explain how one of your team member uh, exemplified collaboration? How did your team uh, show the communication? Explain how. So reflection cards that they can use. So this is all included in the kit when you buy it. So Wendy, Wendy has a question next. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, my question is, um, I didn't get your like, what's what what grader do you teach? Because I teach FBD, so I don't. I'm thinking more FBC this. This is more okay. FBC or like, yeah. Top in, in, yeah. in my class, it's uh, from secondary one to secondary five. Oh, really? Yeah. Multi-level, multi okay. And who's mostly interested? Well, I would say all of them. Really? Okay. Yeah. And it's because like you saw, sometimes it's not even a matter of English. It's just a matter of logic in the, the the different puzzles that you have so the ones with the the, the crop circles sorry like that there is not really english involved in this so you just need critical thinking logic to try to solve the puzzle and since you're in group you can match students like fbc fbd together where they will learn how to help each other and that's one of the thing brings me to why I use it in my classroom. I use these types of games 
to really encourage collaboration, to have students speak with one another, and to have students try things out. Okay, sometimes they're scared. They're scared to be wrong. They're scared to have the wrong answer, so they don't want to try. So sometimes they say, um, "I think the answer is this for the puzzle." We'll try it out, test it out. It's not going to break. So it encourages them to um, to feel more comfortable with try and trial and errors. But yeah, I use it with secondary one to secondary five. Question for you, Christian. Is it possible that you te place in a team with a prof de maths who identifies the problematic, who has the the questions that will touch these problematics? On dirait qu'on on, on pourrait presque croire qu'on s'est préparé ensemble à l'avance. Because that's what I did. <laughs> that's what I did. Uh, in um, in December, last December, I uh, with the, the math teacher. We decided to play a game with the two classes together. Okay, so we had few students before Christmas, and we decided to play a math English breakout game together. So we we joined our two classes together. The math teacher found a game that was for the level of most of our students. Okay, so I think it was algebra something. I don't remember exactly. I'm not the math teacher, but <laughs> so. Um, and it was in English. So then all the students would play together in trying to solve the math problems with the English uh, scenario and the English clues that they had. So yes, you can absolutely do this. And that's one of the other reason why I love those games is because we can share between classes. I did it with the math teacher. I could do it with the science class. I could do it with uh, history if I wanted to. So yes, you can find games on the website that are already made that you can use. That's what we did. Or we could create our own based on what we would like to review or what we would like to have students uh, do in this case. Yeah. I just wanted to add that I think too, because it, it, to answer to Wendy that it, because it's not an ESL, website it's from the united states it's um it's first language that's language arts so often you know as you know when you choose games or even short short stories sometimes i choose them from sometimes primary grade or the junior grades so that they can begin to adapt with those ones and with time you know they they improve but we have a tendency to go younger huh? because those are uh, Absolutely. Arts. Yeah. And the first time I looked at the website, I saw that was mostly for elementary schools, uh, the games that were there. So I was like, eh, maybe it's not going to be for my students. But then I, I realized that the, the game, the puzzles could be solved by anyone. And the English level would be accessible to my students as well. And sometimes sometimes I adapt the, the, the vocabulary or the grammar from, for, let's say from the scenario or from the clues, okay? So I download the file and I will change a couple of words, adapt the sentence to make it more accessible for my students. Because yes, it's first language uh, from the United States. So I tend to adapt sometimes. There's a comment uh, that reads, it'd be great to see you in action with your English class, you know, like on a video or something. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I, I didn't get the chance to film yet, but <laughs> yes, I, I understand how it would be great for you to, to, to watch this. Um, if you would like uh, some like a demonstration, uh, if you go on Facebook, Breakout EDU, they have a Facebook page. There's a bunch of pictures of videos from uh, how other teachers use it in their classroom mostly from United States, but the idea is the same. And I have the, the, the biggest reward I've seen with this is that I, I've, I saw students that never spoke in the classroom, never spoke to one another, 
And then once they started playing the games in teams, they collaborated, they, they, they exchanged, they communicated together. So for me, it was great just to see this in action in the classroom. Students playing a game, they forgot about English, they forgot about doing their, uh, their, their workbook or whatever. They had fun without even knowing that they were practicing English and practicing logical logic, critical thinking, uh, all those skills that are just as essential. The other, the other thing I could mention is that this is all based on uh, introducing games with learning. Maybe you've heard in the last years, people talking about uh, gamification. I think they call it. yeah gamification yeah. okay so not just using games for games but having your your learning in um, using games okay so your learning and your 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 progression is using the idea of games okay so students love it they have challenges they when you play digital games they, they, they will move ahead in the game. They will see the progression on the screen. Uh, it's, it's, it's exactly what gamification is all about. You give the scenario, you create the mood, you, you put them in the, when I, I did the breakout from the alien code, you, you, you have to, um, to play the, you have to play the part of they are aliens we have to communicate with. And so they, they get, you get those weird looks, but in the end, they, 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 they fall for it. And they, they, they play the games because the scenario creates the event for them. And so I always announce it in advance next week, we're gonna have a breakout game. Don't miss it, it's gonna be fun. So it creates the event and students want to participate when we do this. There is another question. Uh, do they have to use English only? So I, in your class, or I guess if you're using it with different teachers, then maybe, you know, that's not a hard and fast rule or? Yeah, so when I, when I use it with other teachers, like with Matt, uh, I don't expect to use English only, but uh, yes, when they're in English class, I encourage, strongly encourage them to use uh, only English. Uh, of course, I'm not always there around them to listen since there are like four groups to look at, but yes, I strongly encourage them to use English only. And uh, Escape Games, if I could just uh, go on again, uh, <clears throat> what I do is that I put the box in the middle of the table. I put the printout uh, with the box. Students, they have to uh, solve the puzzle, but I could even design where I have the, some of the clues will be hidden in the classroom and they will have to go and find where are the clues. Uh, I could put some, stick some things on the walls that wouldn't make sense at first, but then it would be a clue for their game and they would have to use the UV light to find the answer that is hidden on the poster on the wall. So then creativity here uh, just no limit to what you can do to make the, the game even more challenging or uh, even more fun to play for students. So here it's just creativity. Uh, one of the questions, uh, do they have mysteries, whodunits? I guess like murder mysteries and things like that. There are some games that have this type, but um, it, the game are always opening locks to break out to open the last box. It's not exactly oriented to uh, find a person like a murder mystery in this case. But not that I've seen so far on the platform yet, though. Go ahead, Wendy, maybe I said it wrong. No, I, I was just thinking about the, the 3102 escape game. Uh... Uh, the ghost of Emma Albani. She, it's a learning situation. I could, you know, they have to get out of the room, so they would have to solve puzzles. And 
So I was thinking that, you know, like I, I like that kind of thing. Uh, more than just like finding shapes and things like that, you know, more <laughs> language, more language than, you know, that's my style anyway. But I, I'm thinking that, you know, maybe we could do something with the, that. Yeah, I, and it's my, it's the first year that I use those boxes. So I haven't had the time to go ahead and go through all the games that are on the website. So maybe they are those types of games available. I haven't found them yet. I could maybe show you uh, an example of a digital game quickly because basically sure. it's uh, similar to this one. Okay. So zombie outbreak, a strange genetic mutation has led to a zombie outbreak. You are the leading scientist on gene editing and are the world's last hope. So here you have four locks to open. So what we could do is that I could have the game on an iPad for students to play uh, on a team, in a team, or they could even play on their cell phones individually. So here we have a short written clue. And then we have the picture, which is the clue itself. And I have to find three letters as the combination for this. Do you think right away you could see what is the answer from this one? So here you have to look at everything on the picture. I'm going to give you a clue. Beep, beep, beep. Uh, beep, 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 beep. So as you see at the bottom of the picture, you have dash and dots. Well, they refer to Morse codes, Morse code letters. So then students have to go and find what is the letter that corresponds to this Morse code. This one, this one. Here, I know it by heart, but this one is N, Y, C, New York City. And then we have the second lock or the second puzzle where they have to find and here it's shapes to solve the puzzle. And so they, they will go through the four locks like this to break out of the digital game, digital breakout game. So in this case, like you saw, the students had to do, I'm sure students, well, my students <laughs> didn't know what Morse codes uh, were and they don't know it by heart. So they have to do a research to find Morse codes and match it with the corresponding letters. So when they have to do other research like this, other steps, then oh, it sparks their interest because it, it, they find what is the lead for the solution and they will try to find the real solution to escape. So they love it when we do this. This is really interesting. I really love it. The collaboration, flex classroom, they're moving around and using their logic, exchanging together. And they really do have a lot of fun. Yes. And like I said, when we create events with other classes or just for a special day at school, we have a special breakout game that we can play. It always gives something more uh, to the event and students. At first, when you, you, they start doing this puzzle, they don't know what to do. They, they don't know what to look at, but that's the thing. The more you do it, the more you find the patterns, the more you find solutions, you find them faster. And it's, it's part of logic, visual clues, being able to uh, try things out. I tried this one, it didn't work. I tried that one, that didn't work. Oh yes, that one work. So finally finding the real answer for the solution and not waiting for the teacher to give them the solution. Well, it, it works really well with my students so far. Hey, well, thank you so much. That was really interesting. Does anyone have any final questions or for Christian? Christian, did you want to add something or? Well, 
what I did is I had to, to convince my, my, my principal to buy the boxes and to subscribe to the, 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 the platform. I had the CP on my side and we, we, we worked together at uh, selling why it would be so great in the, the classes and um, trying to convince that yes, it can be used not just in English, but math could use those, those kits, science could use those kits alone. And I know that, um, oh dang, I don't remember by heart, but there is, uh, anyway, a school in the Quebec region where they used those platforms and they translated uh, some of the games in French. So they were math teachers that use the math games and they just translated with the little parts that were there into French. And so they can play in math, no English needed. So it convinced my principal when we said that it was not just for English, but it could be used for any school subject. And we can even design our, our own games and make it for French uh, for the next one. So. It's, I think it's a seller if we, <laughs> if we, if we say this, sold. Uh, it can, yeah, they'll, they'll be sold to the idea. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I wish I worked in the French sector still. I work in the English sector because now I want to work with this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been mulling around trying to do something about gamification, but anyway, maybe we'll talk, we'll see. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, You're thank you very much. <laughs>